coming up, the man believed to be the central character in sexually assaulting little boys in court today. Outside, an angry mob waited. Our cameras in Bank Lane as a 36-year-old father of a 14-year-old boy is charged for the heinous crimes. Olympic gold medalist Pauline David Thompson, the victim of a robbery at the weekend. Tonight, her hard-earned medals are gone. The national treasures in the wrong hands tonight. Prime Minister Ingram to put crime at prime time. His long-awaited address comes up days before key bills are tabled in Parliament. And the Boundaries Commission named, they will make recommendations regarding the realignment of constituencies for next year's general elections. We'll tell you the key players coming up. It's Monday, October 3rd. Get ready. The Bahamas Tonight starts right now. Covering the islands of the Bahamas, ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. Great to see you this Monday. I'm Shanique Miller. This is The Bahamas Tonight National Report. Tempers flared along Parliament Street today as a 36-year-old man was hauled before the courts for allegedly sexually assaulting underage boys. It's a crime that's enraged the country. And today, scores of angry Nasubians lined Parliament Street to get a glimpse of the father of a teenage boy as he was escorted to court. Foreign Kerry picks up the story. Shackled at the wrists and ankles, 36-year-old Coffee Edward Goodman, also known as Elvado Ferguson, a resident of Yorkshire Street, Cable Beach, was escorted to court on Parliament Street under heavy police guard. As he neared court, an angry mob greeted him, photographing him and hurling insults. In court, Goodman, the father of a 14-year-old son, was charged with forcibly taking and detaining a 12-year-old boy against his will on Wednesday, August 17th, with the intention of having unlawful sex with him. Court papers show that Goodman followed through and allegedly had sex with the underaged boy. The court also charged Goodman with having sex with a 12-year-old boy five months earlier on Saturday, March 12th. The Yorkshire Street resident was not required to make a plea. A preliminary inquiry has been scheduled. The prosecutor objected to bail on the grounds that Goodman was convicted of a similar offense and has other matters of a similar nature pending. But Goodman's attorney, Takoya Bridgewater, argued for him to receive bail, noting that Goodman's matters date back to 1993 and 1998, and the amount of years where matters can be held against him has passed. He also stated that Goodman is a hard-working, reformed individual, noting that the 36-year-old has received threats from prison officers, as well as other persons in prison, and fears for his safety. He suggested that Goodman be electronically monitored. Bridgewater also told the court Goodman was allegedly assaulted by a CDU officer on his way to court. But the prosecutor stressed that the charges are of a serious nature and Goodman can be a risk to the public because all of the charges are of a similar nature and involve children. Magistrate Carolyn Void Evans noted that there was a mob outside court as the case has generated national outrage and as a result, concerns for Goodman's safety are valid. She said Goodman has rights under the law. However, she said under the circumstances, it would be safer for him to be kept in isolation at Fox Hill Prison. She also pointed out that Goodman has served time before for unnatural carnal knowledge. She then denied Bill, reminded Goodman to Fox Hill Prison, and adjourned the case to December 16th. Before Goodman left, however, she reminded him that nothing is more powerful than prayer. And after thanking the magistrate for the encouraging words, Goodman expressed concerns about his safety, stating that he knows Jesus as Lord. As he exited court, the angry crowd again jeered him, and under tight security, he was whisked away in a waiting prison bus. Fern Carey, ZNS News. The issue of crime to be at the forefront tonight. Prime Minister Ingram will deliver a national address on crime tonight right here on the ZNS network at 8 o'clock. With the murder count in the triple digits and other serious crimes on the rise, the Prime Minister is expected to unveil the government's plans to deter crime in the country. Last week, National Security Minister Tommy Turnquist, who was also leader of government business in the House of Assembly, said when Parliament resumes this Wednesday, the Ingram administration plans to reveal some anti-crime initiatives that will ensure criminals are kept off the streets. So just what's set to take place when Parliament resumes on Wednesday? Our news team caught up with Turnquist recently, who gave us an idea. Essentially, we're going to have a package of bills that deal with the criminal justice system. That we know that there is a difficulty with persons out on bail. And so we're going to look at ways in which we can amend the Bail Act um, so as to determine, in conjunction with the judiciary, what a reasonable period of time is. 
With 104 murders already this year, many Bahamians are calling for more action. And based on what they have planned for this upcoming house sitting, Turnquest says that's exactly what they'll do. More action to tackle the crime problem head on. We're also going to um, uh, deal with amendments to the penal code. Uh, we're going to look at the categorization of murder and what offenses, what type of murder would constitute the death penalty. We want to be very clear in terms of those gruesome murders, we want to codify that in the law, those gruesome types of murder that will qualify for the death penalty, uh, those that will qualify for life imprisonment. The House meets this Wednesday at 10 in the morning. Well, ZNS News has learned that Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Member of Parliament for St. Anne's, Brent Simonet, and National Security Minister, Mount Moriah Member of Parliament, Tommy Turnquest, have been appointed to the Boundaries Commission. The Boundaries Commission meets every five years to study the number of registered voters in a constituency and recommendations to Parliament for realignment. While no official announcement has been made on the remaining members of the group, Prime Minister Ingram confirmed to reporters earlier that a new Boundaries Commission will be appointed before Parliament resumes on Wednesday. Some constituencies in Nassau have expanded tremendously. Um, Golden Isles, as an example, is a huge area um, in terms of population, in terms of registered voters. Um, you'll see that some constituencies have 5,000 plus registered voters and some constituencies have fewer than 3,000 voters here in Nassau. Um, and uh, the idea is to try and make them as near to equal as is possible, recognizing that it is not possible to have, have them all equal, but to have a yardstick by which you seek to do so. Ms. Ingram then revealed that the commission may even consider reducing the number of constituencies nationwide. Presently, there are 41. You know, when I came to office in 1992, the Bahamas had 49 seats in the House. We reduced the number by nine. So in the, the, 2000, in the 1997 election, there were only 40 seats in the House of Assembly. Um, the Progressive Liberal Party added a seat um, when they came to office and made it 41. We'll have to determine whether or not the 40 we decided in 1997 is still the 40 we want today, or whether or not we want to accept the 41 that they have. Well, we all remember this occasion. It was September of 2000 when the world got to witness the sports power of this little Bahamas as the Golden Girls won the 4 by 100 meter relay over the heavily favored United States led by Marion Jones. It was at that Olympics in Australia that Pauline Davis Thompson also captured the gold medal in the 200 meters after Jones was stripped for taking performance enhancing drugs. Well, tonight, Davis Thompson is void of her medals as thieves robbed her of her most precious treasures. Tonight, the Golden Girl is appealing to the person or persons who broke into her home over the weekend to return the medals considered a national treasure. Charles Fisher has the story. National icon and Golden Girl Pauline Davis Thompson never thought this negative spotlight would have fallen on her. Not that I never thought, because I always believe that anything is possible. No matter what is happening in this life, you can never eliminate yourself from it. Anything is possible, but, but what I would have never thought in a million years is them taking my medals. That would have, that never crossed my mind. It was Friday afternoon that her older sister telephoned her to say that her home was broken into. When she arrived, this is what she saw. Look, like I must have used a crowbar or something, and I have this protective, um, shield around the, the locks whatever and they pry it off and yeah yeah <laughs> and um basically went in they took all my electronic stuff and they threw my in my bedroom i had a, a cabinet family cabinet i had my medals and stuff in and of course they threw all the paperwork all over the floor all my clothes everywhere i initially at first i didn't realize that my medals were missing and then i started kind of looking through the rubble to see look for my medals and then I, I, I discovered that my medal was missing and I just kind of just I just I just lost it. Flat screen televisions and other electronic devices stole it. Those right now not important as the medals. You could replace a television you know or a DVD player but you can't charge you cannot replace a medal. Not, 
I'm no longer an athlete. I'm 45 years old now. I, I can't go back and get those medals and 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 I. I I am, I am so heartbroken that someone could be so cruel as to, first of all, to violate my privacy, like the break into my home, and then not, not, just, not just take the, 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 the television and things like that, but to, to take my medals. She offered this plea to those responsible. I'm pleading with you. I'm begging you to please bring my medal back. Meantime, Central Police Station in the headlines again, and it's not good news. This time, a constable stationed at Central was caught on the wrong side of the law. According to reports, the officer was caught having sex with two women under arrest. He was immediately dismissed from the force and charged in connection with one of the incidents. He is to return to court next March. Now, Central Station is embattled, the embattled arm of the force. This is not the first time the station has been in the news. You will remember two recent occasions where prisoners on work release apparently just walked away from the compound. And another time, another man under arrest escaped through a back door at Central Station. Well, the police and business owners of the Carmichael community partnering to fight crime operating in the busy southwestern district. Crime is also a factor. That is why business owners and police met today to partner to combat this scourge, which usually literally kills business. Here's Carla Palmer. Well, it is out of control. Owner of the Noniwe Cafe, Stephen Surratt, feels that way about crime. And he's not alone in his thoughts. That's why Surratt along with other entrepreneurs and the business representatives like William Higgs, manager at Sandy's department store, are joining forces with the police to fight the criminal element. They are participants of the Southwestern Business Crime Prevention Symposium. This is what we need to build relationships with the police and we can, you know, be a team once more that we can fight this crime battle as one unit. We're always concerned about uh, the staff safety, uh, the crime that's going on, and whatever we can do to prevent it. For more than a decade, it's been called a City 2000, the city of the future. And now, years later, the city located in the Carmichael District continues to grow, with an expanding population of both residents and commercial businesses. And unfortunately, with the population explosion, came an increase in crime. However, Minister of National Security Tommy Tanquast says networking has caused a decrease in the crime statistics in recent times. Out of the armed robberies that occurred in this division in 2011, 14 of them, or 17 percent, took place at business establishments. Compared to the same period in 2010, 25 percent of the total armed robberies in this division occurred at business establishments. The challenge now is for all of us to maintain a sustained reduction with the opportunity to voice concerns, the symposium was also the ideal platform to highlight crime prevention strategies and tools such as closed circuit television, CCTV. In fact, Assistant Commissioner of Police Glenn Miller is encouraging business owners everywhere to spend no expense when it comes to protecting their property. If you're going to open a business, in terms of security, one of the first things you need to look at is a closed circuit television. That close like a television is a very powerful witness. While the Business Crime Symposium was the first so far this year, with such a positive feedback, organizers are already committed to it being a quarterly event. Carla Palmer, ZNS News.